Hello, Graphanatics! Do you have groups of data that you wish that you could see the amounts of each with more impact than just looking at the numbers? Then, Grafana's bar chart panel is your go-to. In today's video, I'll show you how to use this powerful tool to visualize your sales, web metrics, financials, and more. So let's get started. The Grafana Bar Chart Panel lets you easily create bar charts that compare multiple data sets across various categories. This panel is highly customizable, allowing you to adjust colors, labels, and access to best represent your data. It's a powerful way to bring clarity and insight to your dashboards, but it has some specific data requirements. So why don't we check them first? Bar charts support only one data frame, and it must have the fields or column names, also at least one string field to be used as the category for the x-axis group, and one or more numerical fields. In other words, it needs a single table, preferably with just one row aside of the column titles, and that the row has at least one text description. But we can also have multiple rows, which will be separated in bar chart groups. The bar chart can also be used to display a time series dataset. But in this case, it is recommended to use the actual time series panel, which can be visualized as bars. For more information on that panel, link in the corner. Last, in case you have multiple datasets, you will have to transform or join them in a single one in the end. To make things easier, during this demo, we will be using examples in CSV format that you can find below in the video description. But now that the bar chart data needs are cleared up, why don't we create our first bar chart panel to visualize those different datasets? We will use Grafana Play to create our first bar chart panel. The steps we will work as well in a local Grafana setup. To access Grafana Play, link in the corner. Grafana Play's home screen is a dashboard. Here, you can follow these steps to access the panel creation screen and add a panel. Now, once in the panel editor, we will set the panel type as a bar chart. We have some bars here, as last time I used this data source and type, and, well, maybe you may have something else. So, to make sure you see the same thing, we will use the Grafana Test Data data source. For more information on this data source, link in the corner. Now, by default, you will see uh, the random walk selected, which gives us something like a time series. So, to make this more understandable, we will change the scenario to a CSV content and copy and paste the example data included here in the video description. Let's copy and paste first the single bar set. Yay! Our first set of data! As mentioned earlier, the names are defined by the column names in the first row, pulling from the second row, the title from the first text field, and the values from the numeric parameters. This is the most common format of data that you will use with bar charts. But what if we have multiple rows? Well, let's copy and paste the multi-bar data set and wow, we have multiple bar sets. As you can see, each row of data creates a set of bars. Last, we can also use time series. So let's copy and paste the last data set time series. Nice, we have something like a time series, but with bars. We don't have too many measurements, but if you had lots of it, it will look like the random walk we had in the beginning. Again, the time series panel using bars is better if you work with this type of data. So why don't we use the multi-item set again and move on to check some customizations we can do on the bar chart. On the right side, the first item that we have is the general panel options, common to almost all panels in Grafana. If you want to learn more about them, link in the corner. For now, I will just change the title to Happy Hour Bars Demo. Now, we have the bar chart options. First, we can select which field we will use as the x-axis. By default, it picks the first column or field. But uh, you can choose if you want to use another column to define the x-axis. Let's remove it just to use the default. Now, uh, we have the orientation. By default, the bars grow vertically. 
but you can paint it growing horizontally. Uh, I prefer the traditional auto vertical. Below, you can rotate the labels under the bars. You can also change the space between the labels, choose to show or not the values, which are on by default. You can also choose to stack the values on top of each other in a single bar or make them like a bar pie chart summing 100%. If you choose to stack, you will be able to change the mega bar width and the bar corner's roundness. But if we turn off the stacking, you can modify the width of the bar groups, the bar's width, the bar's radius in the borders, and also if you want to highlight the whole area of the bar space when hovering. You can also choose a color scheme to be picked up per field, but I like it to be the default. Lastly, you can change the width of the lines around the bars, also the opacity of the bar color, and if you want to have gradients based on opacity, hue, or the color scheme. But let's keep basics. In the tooltip area, you can choose if you want to display a tooltip with only one of the values, so the one that you're hovering on, or all the group's values, or nothing when you hover over. But if you pick all, you can also order the values and define the max height. Or if you don't have them all, you can use the maximum width. Now, the legend is the section at the bottom showing what color is what. You can hide it, but if you keep it, you can set it as horizontal list or a vertical table. And also you can place it on the bottom or on the right of the bars where you will be able to choose how wide to paint it. And you can also select what values to display uh, next to each. On the text size, you can modify how big the values are going to be displayed but I like the standard size. Now, in the axis section, you can set if you want the Y axis info to be displayed on the left, on the right, or just to hide the axis. You can also add a title to the axis, choose how wide you want it, and if you want grid lines, or the color scheme for the axis, and if you want a vertical borderline. You can also change the scale to be linear, logarithmic, or syslog with their respective settings. You can also center the zero value in case your bars have negative values, and you can set manually the minimum and maximum values of the y-axis. Last, you can configure standard options such as units, minimum, maximum, calculations, if you want decimals, change the display name, choose the color palette, or to define what to do when there are no values. But uh, that's pretty much it. Clicking apply adds your bar chart panel. You can make it bigger in your dashboard or add other types of panels. If you want to learn more about other panels, check the videos appearing here on the screen. But now you are an expert creating beautifully straight bar chart panels. Happy dashboarding and have a good one.